Imagine a body which is dead and has fallen on the ground. Thousands of animals have been created to clean this dead body. First, carnivores such as lions or coyotes approach the corpse and they clean up the majority of it. Then the scavengers, such as vultures, come and thoroughly peel off whatever meat is left on the bones. Next, the bearded vultures arrive. The bearded vultures' stomachs are able to digest bones. That is why they carry the bones up and then drop them so that the bones can break into pieces that they can swallow. After the corpse is removed from the ground, the wind sweeps the area and the rain reduces the dust. If there are no cleaning creatures around, the soil is already the biggest cleaning machine of all. It can clean everything on its own. If the corpses were not cleaned from the ground every day, the earth might be rising by a few centimeters every day. It's not only limited to this, we have compiled the most surprising cleaning activities in the universe for you. Don't forget to like our video. Enjoy. Think about an inn. In other words, a guest house. As people go in and out and stay at the inn, the place will get filthy, am I right? Similarly, a functioning factory will need constant cleaning because it will get too dirty. The earth, just like a guest house, sends off 250,000 guests every day. It also welcomes the same amount and there is always an ongoing production in it just like a busy factory. Fruits, people, animals are always being renewed. The earth is actually a giant factory. We said that busy factories and guest houses constantly get dirty and need cleaning. So how is the earth being cleaned? The Earth always gets dirty because it's busy and crowded. But when we look at it, we can't see random filth in the places that humans didn't ruin. Even if we can, the filth will be cleaned in a few days. Let's start with the biggest cleaning activity. According to data from NASA, approximately 100 tons of meteors enter the Earth's atmosphere every day. These meteors are burned, disintegrated, and prevented from hitting us. If this cleaning activity didn't occur, if our atmosphere didn't get rid of the meteors, then 100 tons of meteors might be pouring down on us every day. And by the way, their speed is not normal. They reach a speed that is approximately 20 times faster than a bullet. Actually, we've started talking about the atmosphere, which is very far away. Now let's come closer to our world from the outmost to the inmost and talk about all of the cleaning activities. After entering through the atmosphere, we reach the ozone layer next. The ozone layer helps save us from the ultraviolet light of the sun and other harmful rays. If these ultraviolet lights reach the earth, the DNA of humans humans, animals, plants, and all other creatures would be destroyed. Life would be over in a very short period of time. How about the clouds a little below the ozone layer? Their rain both reduces the dust from the wind, which sweeps the Earth, and cleans the Earth's surface with water. Let's go down to the Earth's surface now. Let's talk about cooperation among animals. In a small lake in Kenya, hippopotamuses and barbfish live together because they have a mutually beneficial relationship. Hippos open their mouths, and barbfish take care of the oral health of hippos. In return, the barbfish fill their stomachs, and the daily cleaning needs of the hippos are met. Merlot fish, which live in the ocean, spend their lives cleaning the parasites off of other animals. Among these animals is the wild Jack Dempsey. Usually, the wild Jack Dempsey eat the small fish, but here, they have an agreement, and both sides follow the rules to a T. Merlot fish start cleaning the school of Jack Dempsey. But because the number of Dempsey fish is higher than Merlot, there isn't enough cleaning service offered. This activity draws sharks' attention. The Jack Dempsey, which couldn't benefit enough from the Merlot, use this opportunity to be cleaned. The shark skin is similar to sandpaper. The Jack Dempsey swim and start rubbing against the shark's skin. This way, they get rid of their dead skin cells and parasites. In fact, there's a cleaning activity going on everywhere and at every second. There are myriads of living creatures which obey this big cleaning order. For example, ants don't leave their dead brothers in the nest to rot. They carry them outside and bury them far away. Birds obey the big cleaning order as well. According to a popular science magazine, passerines pack up their feces in their nests and take these packages away from their nests. There is a cleaning activity in every single part of the universe, and there are billions of creatures who obey this order. There is actually no need to look that far away. Even in our bodies, every time we breathe, our lungs clean our blood of carbon dioxide. Besides that, our white blood cells don't have a brain, knowledge, or consciousness, but they play cops and robbers with the bacteria in our bodies. Likewise, our kidneys filter 1.2 liters of blood every minute. We have 30 trillion cells in our bodies, and the lysosome organelles in each one of them perform intracellular cleaning by breaking down excess or worn out organelles inside the cells. Additionally, you have blinked many times while watching this video. The corneas of your eyes are cleaned every time you blink. 
So from the black holes beyond galaxies to the lysosome organelles in your cells, everything and everyone is actually involved in a cleanup activity in the universe. There can only be one explanation for such an organized and disciplined cleaning system, and for this puzzling order, and that is the al Qudus name of Allah. In other words, all of these grand activities and great cleanups that we see cannot be attributed to the agents who do them on the surface. Neither the atmosphere nor the lysosome organelle know us or clean for us on purpose. If all these cleaning activities aren't attributed to one person, then the title of Allah is given to all the cleaning beings. Perish the thought, perish the thought, but by only denying Allah, countless other Allahs are accepted. Because if daylight and the imaginary miniature suns represented in the shining objects on earth are not attributed to the sun, and they are not said to be the manifestation of the sun's reflection, it would be necessary for the actual sun to be present in every fragment of glass, drop of water, and snowflake that glistens on the face of the earth, and even in every air particle, so that the universal light could exist. If you deny the existence of the great sun in the world we live in, which you see when you look up and whose diameter is 865,370 miles, then you have to accept the reflection of the sun as the sun every time you see its reflection, because you denied the actual sun itself. You denied the actual sun, but you have to accept all of its reflections. In the same way, if you do not attribute all of the cleaning activities, all of the organized and erudite pieces of work that you see in the universe to just one creator, then you distribute its characteristics to the people and creatures who do the work on the surface level. So you actually accept as many creators as there are atoms so as not to accept one creator. Any person who has a mind and reason would understand that this is not logical. Don't forget to like our video so that we can reach more people. Your comments are important to us. We'll read your comments if Allah allows. May Allah protect you.